Okay guys, today we're going to be talking about my truck survival tools. Now, before we jump into this, as always, please don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe. Ring the notification bell, as that really helps the channel out. Now, before we jump into the items specifically that I have outlined here for survival, I want to note that these are survival tools. Some people may ask, you know, what about the recovery tools? Do you have, you know, winches? Do you have straps? Uh, you know, traction aid, stuff like that. And that is another video for another time. I figured instead of making a really long 40 minute video discussing everything that's equipped in the truck for, you know, survival, recovery, rescue, all that kind of stuff, I'd break it down into individual categories. And so today we're gonna be going over some of the basic survival tools that I keep in my truck for, like I said, if I need to hunker down and survive in an area. Now, of course, this stuff is paired with you know water bottles, sleeping bags, and proper equipment. So this isn't just the tools that I have. You know, this isn't all I have. And of course, I do also have recovery items in the truck as well to help me get out of situations so that I don't have to be stuck and hunker down. However, if I have to hunker down for whatever reason, these are the primary uh, tools that I carry in the truck. So the first one that I will mention, and it's carried in the truck slash on my body whenever I'm out in the wilderness or heading into the wilderness or, you know, just in my truck in general, is going to be my personal survival kit. And I've covered this in videos past, but this is just a generalized one person survival kit that has, you know, shelter, fire, all of the basic survival equipment in it, minus a knife, which I will cover in a little bit. It also has a personal locator beacon on the bottom, uh, should I need to deploy that for whatever reason. So this is a personal, or this is my personal survival kit that I've tailored over the years to fit my needs in Alaska. And it's, like I said, carried in my truck when not in use, but it is also carried on body. Just generally, this is my survival kit uh, that I carry in general. Now the truck does also have more survival items and its own survival kit that I might get into in another video, but this is a part of the survival tools for the truck in my opinion. So before we get into some of the bigger tools, we'll talk about some of the smaller tools. Now some may argue about the size of saw that I've chosen, but I will show you why because I've chosen a larger axe for the kit. Now this is a Baco Laplander and this little saw, while small, is incredibly versatile and incredibly capable for its size. So the saw that I carry is very compact. I throw it right next to my survival knife and this sits in the truck to be deployed if I need it. Um, the primary focus here that I like to think about when I talk about a lot of my truck survival equipment is stuff that I could carry on body if my vehicle breaks down and I need to depart from my vehicle. I think it's very easy for some people when building a survival kit or survival tools around their vehicle to just choose the largest equipment because they have a vehicle that will carry it. And while that is true, if you ever need to leave or abandon your vehicle, to you know, hike out of a place. It's nice to have equipment that is small that you can either attach to yourself or throw in a pocket. So when you see a lot of my equipment, it's very man portable and that's done on purpose so that if I do need to leave the vehicle, my equipment will not be a heavy burden that I have to try to carry or worst case, leave it behind. So that fits the Baco Laplander or the Baco Laplander fits this uh, idea and philosophy very well. It is also a very venerable uh, survival and bushcrafting saw. So next to that is my old reliable and faithful survival knife. This is the CRK Pacific. And the reason why I chose the CRK Pacific to be my truck survival knife is because it's a knife that I'm very comfortable with, that I'm very knowledgeable in its use. This is something that I've put a lot of mileage on. I know that it's not going to fail me, and I know that in any realistic survival situation that this knife has my back, and that I can do just about any realistic task, whether it's batoning wood, uh, skinning out an animal, or just basic camp tasks like feather sticking. This knife got me covered and I have no fear utilizing this knife time and again. It's also, being that it's made out of S35VN, a very weather resistant, very corrosion resistant steel realistically for my environment. So it's very low maintenance in that regard as well. So that is why it is my go-to survival knife, primarily because of the amount of uh, 
time that I've used it and the amount of field use that it has seen from me. So moving on to a little bit larger tools is going to be my axe. Now, this was a little bit of a debate because I was thinking about potentially, you know, using a hatchet or having a hatchet, but this is one of those times where because I'm in a vehicle, I'm opting for a larger tool, but still a tool that is very er, field carryable. So this is something that is not very large. This is the Holtzbrook Anabi or Anabi. Um, and this is a small axe, it is a 20 inch handled axe, so something in the lines of a small forest axe. So it bridges that gap of being capable and having the same size and head weight as a standard axe or a small boy's axe, but having a little bit more field portability and having a 20 inch handle. So once again, this is something that if I had to abandon my vehicle and hike out, this is still an axe that I could very much carry, but being that it is an axe, I could do larger things such as shelter craft if need be. Um, or what I really think about with this uh, axe is if I needed to drop trees to say act as additional traction aids, or if I needed to try to recover my vehicle using trees or logs, this is uh, an axe that I feel reasonably confident could do that job. It's not going to be the best tool for dropping trees, but for smaller trees such as uh, four to five inches in diameter, this axe would definitely drop them reasonably quick and process them reasonably quick. So if I had to use some kind of tree system to work on my vehicle or help recover my vehicle, this would be a really good choice for that, at least from my mindset and from where I'm thinking. So that's why I chose the Anabi uh, as my truck axe. Now the last tool here is definitely more survival related, and that is my truck gun. And this is a survival rifle for me, and some may argue, you know, it's not a 22, it's not for small game, but I tried to choose something that was very versatile, very compact, and could honestly handle the environment and the animals, the creatures here very well. And this is a little bit more for self-defense and procurement of larger animals. So some people might not like my truck gun choice, but this is a Winchester 94. And I like this gun because it fits very well and very easily inside a vehicle. And being that it is a very small or rather streamlined package, it's very discreet and easy to just throw into the back of the truck. It's not going to stand out as well because something like an AR-15 or an AK kind of has a negative connotation or, you know, maybe looked at a little bit funny like, you know, some people may uh, question why that's there. This very much does not bring that same kind of attention, so it blends in pretty well, it looks pretty civilian, but yet the 3030 cartridge that it fires is still more than potent enough to handle things like bears, things like moose, caribou, any type of larger animals, especially in self-defense if the need be. So this is just a generalized survival rifle for me. And once again, you know, it's not gonna be the greatest for taking on small game. It's definitely not a squirrel gun, but I think realistically for taking down large game animals and for defense, it is a very admirable rifle. And once again, it fits very well and very easily inside a truck. So that is my survival rifle choice for the Winchester 94. And I also do, though it's not included in this because it's not necessarily a tool, but I also carry a backup uh, 20 rounds for the gun. So the gun, when it is in the truck and operational as a truck gun, is fully loaded with uh, six rounds in the magazine plus another 20 rounds should the need arise. So that is what I carry for a survival rifle. And that may change in the future over to a 22 uh, for small game harvesting. But for now, I really do like having a little bit of a larger caliber rifle, something that I feel is a little bit more appropriate for potential self-defense against uh, animals. And once again, being able to harvest larger animals. So. That is the basics to my truck survival tools. Once again, there are recovery tools or survival tools. There are survival kit and all these kinds of things. So this is just one video in many parts. And I didn't want to just make one large video covering every single thing because that would be boring and a bit uh, drawn out. 
So anyways guys, hopefully you've enjoyed taking a look at some of my survival tools that I carry in the truck in case I need to deploy them and that is some of the reasoning behind them. Once again, even the Winchester 94 is a very field carryable uh, rifle. Of course, I do have a sling on it so it can be very easily slung and carried if I need to abandon the truck for whatever reason. If recovery is not an option, uh, I can easily abandon the vehicle with all of these tools on my body and of course with the personal survival kit in tow. So anyways guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. As always, God bless and I'm out.